Hello students. Okay, we're getting fairly close to the end of our series of videos. So what we're going to look at in this video is two special um, graphs. One is a horizontal line, which again is a linear function. And the second one is a vertical line, which once again is a linear function. And each of these has a uh, special of um, equation to go along with it, which you'll find out about very shortly. Okay, let's have a look at this particular um, horizontal line. Now, what we can do is let's have a look at the uh, some points that lie on the line. So, for example, for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that point there has an x coordinate of negative 7 and a y coordinate of 4. That point has an x coordinate of negative 4 and a y coordinate of 4. Let's do one more. This point here has an x coordinate of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and a y coordinate of 4. So if you look at those three examples and have a think about it, it should be fairly obvious that what, what uh, you know about this particular line here is the y-coordinate is always going to be 4. Every point on the line is 4 units above the x-axis. So therefore, the equation of that line is simply the y-coordinate equals 4. So in other words, the equation doesn't, doesn't contain <clears throat> the variable x. Another way you could think about this, this is the way I prefer to think about it, is the y-coordinate's always 4, and therefore that's its equation. But if you wanted to do it another way, you could say every straight line, or almost every straight line, has an equation with that form to it. Let me just make that a bit neater. I'll make that plus sign so it looks a bit nicer, a little bit nicer. There we go. Y equals gradient times X plus Y intercept. So if we wanted to do it that way, well, the gradient of this line, which we learned in a previous video, is zero because the gradient is a measure of steepness and the steepness of that line is zero. So you could sort of say the equation y is y equal to 0x, and then the y-intercept is 4. And of course, 0 times x is just 0, and you get exactly the same equation. So a couple of ways you can sort of show that the equation of this line is just y equals 4, and it doesn't in fact contain the variable x. Okay, similarly, let's have a look at this vertical line. So I'll get the coordinates of that point, which is negative 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the coordinates there are negative 3, 6. Coordinates there, negative 3, 0. And coordinates, so oh, this one here is negative 3, negative 4. That one's too hard to get down to and count. Now, once again, if you look at what we found here and think about it, what's common about the coordinates of these three points is they all have an x-coordinate of negative 3. And once again, that makes sense that that's going to be true for every point on this line because every point on this line is three units from the y-axis. So that means that the equation of this line is the x-coordinate of every point is negative 3. So a vertical line has the equation x equals negative 3, or x equals whatever the x-intercept is, and it doesn't contain a y. And it turns out we really have to do this equation that way. That's all you have to think about it. Let's try to do it this way and see what happens. Okay, let's say we're going to assume that it fits the equation y equals some number times x plus some number. Well, this is the gradient, but unfortunately, the gradient 
for a vertical line is undefined. There is no number. So there is no equation in that form. We have to just get rid of that. So therefore, we have to think about it this way, that every point on this line has an x-coordinate of 3, because they're all that distance from the y-axis, and that's the equation. OK, let's go ahead and try this. OK, we're going to go ahead and sketch some graphs. I'm going to do one of each and then let you have a go at doing the other two. OK, so sketch the graph of y equals negative 2. Well, all we have to do, we know that y equals is always a horizontal line. So find y equals negative 2 on the y-axis. And, oh, it's red. There we go. That's OK. And just sketch the line like so. I might make that a little bit tidier if I can. A bit hard doing this on the screen. And that's all there is to it. Anytime you have y equals some number, in fact, the general equation, whoops, the general equation is of the form y equals c, is how we name that one, and c is just the y-intercept. So it has that form. It's going to be a horizontal line. What about this one here, x equals negative 4? Well, from the previous page, we learned that any equation of this form is a vertical line, and the x-intercept, in this case, is negative 4. So that's just there. And we go ahead and draw the vertical line that passes through that point. Uh, once again, I think I can do better than that. There. And there. And there's the graph of x equals negative 4. In general, the equation is of the form x equals k, where k is the y-intercept. OK, go ahead and try those two and those two, and then we'll go ahead and check answers. OK, let's go ahead and finish this off. So y equals 3, again, two-step process. Find the y-intercept of 3 and draw the horizontal line that passes through that point. Find y-intercept of 0. Well, that's going to be right at the origin. And once again, draw the horizontal line that passes through that. So the line with equation y equals 0 turns out to just be the x-axis. Going over to the questions in the other grid, x equals 2. Well, the x-intercept of 2 is there. And the basic uh, graph, if you have a form, if the equations of the form x equals k is a vertical line passing through the x-intercept. In this case, the x-intercept is 2. And there's the graph there. And similarly, x equals 0. We need to find the graph that passes through the origin. So it turns out the equation of the y-axis is x equals 0. So the graphs of horizontal and vertical lines are quite easy, but you do need to um, separate these two in your mind. y equals c graphs to be a horizontal line. x equals k, where k is the x-intercept, graphs to be a vertical line. And I think that's going to finish off the uh, videos on sketching linear functions. So hopefully you've learned a few things if you've watched the videos. And good luck um, in your future studies on this topic.